One afternoon in July 1998, we left Casey's car at Flater's Restaurant, where the Flambeau River joins the Chippewa, and drove my car to the Highway 8 Bridge for the next part of our journey. Our canoe guidebook predicted it would be a nine-hour trip from the bridge to Flater's, but we disregarded that advice. We had found that we could usually do trips in half the slate of time. I figured five hours. I was wrong. This part of the river is very watery, surrounded by long stretches of marshy wetlands interspersed with hills on which some attractive houses have been built. Many of the cabins and houses were set back from the shore far enough to permit a grassy space, or as river ecologist Tom Waters would have called it, a riparian zone. My experience with the XL Energy Dam relicensing project had educated my eye with regard to appreciating shoreline. One Wisconsin DNR study that investigated why people buy expensive waterfront property informed me that most people buy it to fish and to appreciate the beauty, but they often clear the messy-looking weeds that make good fish habitat. Thinking more about shoreline erosion, I wondered if XL's operations of the dams was the culprit or if the rising and falling of floodwater wouldn't have had an equal impact. When I shared this thought with KC, she reminded me that nature doesn't cause the river to rise and fall twice a day. KC told me she was excited about getting to the Mississippi, but strangely, I was not looking forward to the end. The water was a clear brown, and we could easily see the rippled sandy bottom. Since KC has better eyesight, she was our map reader and navigator. She told me we weren't making the kind of progress we thought we would make. Concerned, we paddled on. A marker on our map indicated an old ferry crossing, and she began to look for it intently. As we passed cabins, clusters of trailer houses, and what appeared to be a family campground, she imagined seeing the railroad bridge that would herald the spot just around every bend. We saw a large house with a couple of smaller cabins and some places that had been cleared for camping. We saw one small building with screening which KC said was a fish cleaning house, but no railroad bridge announcing our destination. As the day wore on, we began to be more aware of the setting sun. We retrieved our compass, watched the sun still above the tree line, and tried to figure out where we were. An owl hooted in the woods. Well, that is not a good sign, KC said. They only come out at night. Spotting a deer watching us from the bank, we stopped paddling and drifted toward it until it decided we were too close. It bounded back into the trees, probably to watch us go by. We stopped to dump the water that was sloshing around in the bottom of the canoe. It felt good to stand up. I had started to get pain in my wrist from paddling. We saw people along what looked like a boat landing on the left bank. Two pickup trucks and two couples watched the river. They asked us if we had seen any dogs. They had brought two of them down for a swim, and the animals had taken off. When we told them we hadn't seen any dogs and that we were headed for Flaters, one of them said, Wow, that's four hours from here. Should I have asked them for a lift to Flaters? We would see. I told KC that we would paddle until 8 p.m. before resorting to Plan B, although I had no idea what Plan B would be. I figured that at midsummer we would have light until 9.30, but if we were to believe the dog owners, we were going to be in some serious trouble. We paddled on, soon reaching Flambeau Ridge, the beginning of the famous Big Bend in the Chippewa. We were still paddling as night descended on the river, but the full moon gave us ample light. Up ahead we saw blue light on the left bank. Our guiding star... <laughs> turned out to be a Paps Blue Ribbon beer sign. We pulled in between a leisure time pontoon boat and two ski machines, dragged our canoe on shore, and trudged toward a bar that looked like a renovated log cabin. One of the windows hosted a red Line and Kugel's neon sign. We went in. <laughs>